Good morning. We are gathered as the people of Fieldburg Lutheran Church. This is December 13th. It is the third Sunday in the season of Advent. Welcome to worship. goodness. You are God over everything. Bless us as we light these three candles of the Advent wreath. By the light of these candles, remind us of Jesus, our light and our salvation. Through Jesus, you give the water of life to all those who thirst. So we look forward to that day when waters will gush up in the wilderness and the deserts will bloom with life. Prepare us now for your coming among us. God, we praise you forever. Amen. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give thanks to God who made us, who saves us, and is always with us. God pours out generosity like a fountain of living water. God is solid as a rock, the foundation of our lives. God is the light coming into the world. 
Amen. When we were baptized, we were connected to the life of Jesus Christ. We are wrapped in something new and perfect, God's forgiveness and love. So we give thanks to God for the gift of baptism. God, we thank you. At the beginning of everything, your spirit moved over the swirling waters of creation. And then you spoke and created the world. And you created life. And you take delight in every living thing. Water has always been part of your story, God. You rescue people from destruction, like when you rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You set people free from bondage, like when you brought the people of Israel through the sea, out of slavery and into freedom. Jesus came to the river and was baptized by John and filled with the Holy Spirit and with water and your holy word. You make us your children and workers in your kingdom. We thank you for the gift of water, which keeps everything alive. And we thank you for new life that comes through Jesus Christ. Like a giant rainstorm, pour down your Holy Spirit on us and make our lives new by your forgiveness, grace, and love. We honor you and we thank you, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, now and always. Amen. Christ comes into the world. Prepare the way of the Lord. The glory of the Lord will be revealed. All people will see it together. He will be called Emmanuel. Which means God with us. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness will not overcome it. The joy of Christ coming into the world be with you all. And also with you. God who moves us, stir up your faithful people. Open our ears to the words of your prophets and the good news of your Savior coming among us. Fill us with your spirit, so that in words and singing, in loving and serving, we testify to your light through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who is living and ruling now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah, the 61st chapter. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. 
He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty to captives, and to release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them garlands instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins they shall rise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garment of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness." as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shoots of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the wa watercourses of the Negeb. Those who showed with tears w will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their slaves. A reading from Thurs Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God, Jesus Christ, in you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the Lord of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who called you faithful, he will do this, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Good morning. This is the third Sunday in Advent, and Cora and I want to show you some things. Here is a mirror. And what do we see in the mirror? ourselves yes beautiful. we see ourselves in the mirror <laughs> so we also have a flashlight and we want to show you a little bit about reflection so when we point the light at the mirror we are showing a light a reflection of the flashlight so what we want you to know is that we are called as people of god and children of god to reflect off Jesus Christ. And you know what that means? That means that we, do we care about other people in the world? Yes. 
do we listen to them if they need somebody to listen to them? And do we give them a hug if they're feeling sad? And lots of ways we can help others, show others that we love them just as Jesus Christ loved us first. So be the reflection of the light always. And um, we want to show everybody that we care, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's pray. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Help us. Help us. Reflect, reflect your light, your light each, each and every day, every day, so that others, for others may see, may see all that is good, all that is good through, through you, you. In your name, we pray. In your name, we pray. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? John confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. During my first year at college, I went to the Rose Bowl in California. I traveled with three other guys who lived on the same floor in the dormitory with me. And we drove all the way out to California in my parents' station wagon. We took turns driving, the four of us, so we could drive all through the night. And during the night, we were driving through some wide open, vast expanse of desert somewhere in Arizona or New Mexico. Now, here in Iowa, we have towns and farms and houses and businesses all along the highway. You always see lights wherever you are. But in the desert, in those vast, empty expanses of desert, there is nothing. It's dark, deep, deep darkness. And on a long stretch of straight highway, somewhere around one or two in the morning, there was this moment, a moment where there were no other cars in sight, nothing ahead of us, behind us, no cars coming towards us, everything. Everything was dark. Whoever was driving at that moment had this brilliant idea. Watch this, he said, and he shut off the headlights. And there was nothing. We were swallowed up in the darkness. And it lasted two seconds. There was a panic, a moment of, of just almost severe urgency when he grabbed for that headlight switch and turned the lights on again. In the darkness, everything, everything had disappeared. There were no lane markers. There was no highway. 
no shoulders on the side, no way to know if you were safe or if you were driving off the road for two whole seconds. We were lost in space and in time. John's gospel story begins in the dark. John's gospel story begins beyond any limits or constraints of space and time. John takes us all the way back, but he begins his story on a grand cosmic scale because John takes us all the way back to the creation. And there, at the creation, John begins his story. In the beginning was the Word. But then, right in the middle of this grand cosmic introduction, the whole gospel story suddenly narrows down it and zooms in on this one. One person, John. John, who is called the witness. John, who is not the Messiah. John is the one who points to somebody else. John, we are told, points us to the light. It's a strange thing about this gospel story. We're not exactly told who John is. Instead, we're told first who John is not. John is not the Messiah. He is not Elijah. He is not the prophet who is to come. Whoever John is, and whatever John the baptizer or John the witness is going to be, or whatever he does, when he finally says something about himself, he knows himself. He identifies himself completely in connection to Jesus. John points us to another. John points us to the light that's breaking into the darkness of our world. I wonder if we can do that. I wonder if we can think of ourselves, not just in terms of ourselves, but if we could imagine ourselves in connection to Jesus as people who point away from ourselves and point to this wonderful light that breaks into the darkness of the world. We all know we've had some tough times this year, and there are those people who have seemed to maybe make it worse fanning the flames of anger and hatred. And some have used this year as an opportunity to draw more attention to themselves or maybe get more money for themselves. But there are others. There are those wonderful few who point beyond themselves, who take the attention away from themselves and point to light. Even here in our own congregation, it's been a joy to see how in these days and months when there is some hardship or darkness, there have been those who have worked so hard to draw other people into our online worship services. There are those of all ages who have decided to come in front of you and read the story of God's holy word that breaks into this time and breaks into our lives. There have been so many who have come here on Wednesdays or Thursdays as we record and they sing together, spread out safely at proper distances, but here in our sanctuary. So we still have music, song, and hymns for our worship. We have those who don't worry about the attention for themselves, but they point beyond so that worship of God might continue. We have had others who have helped put together those kits, those generosity bags that we delivered to your home so that you might have that reminder of the good things 
and the gifts that come to us by being people of God and being community together. We haven't done this because it got us attention or because it gave us some kind of personal recognition or praise. But people faithfully and in a spirit-mindedness have pointed beyond themselves and moved the attention toward this light that is always coming into the world. John was that kind of a person who pointed beyond himself and pointed towards the light, the light of Jesus Christ coming into the world. In this time, when we know there's struggles, when we know there's darkness, we need to remember that call to be more like John, to point to light, to punch holes in the darkness, because the darkness isn't going to swallow us up. There is a way forward. There is a light that switches on when we're on that dark and frightening way. That light switches on and it is Jesus Christ who's putting a light on our path and giving us a road forward. Christ is coming into the world. It's our calling. It's our privilege that we get to bring the world's attention to see that light. Bear witness to the light. Be like John. Be the witness. Be the one who points to the light that shines in the darkness. Amen. God of power and might, shine your light and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. God who sends messengers, empower and equip your church to proclaim the good news. Inspire the witness of musicians, teachers, writers, deacons, pastors, and bishops, church leaders of every kind, and all those who are faithful to point others to the way of Jesus Christ. Embed your word in our hearts. God of every living creature, you show your favor to all of creation. Pour out your kindness and renew the earth. 
Give your care to animals and plants, rivers and oceans, mountains and fields. In this season, let your good earth rest and be restored. God of all peoples and nations, plant us as your oaks of righteousness and work in us so we care for each other. Transform the leaders of every nation. Teach them again that you love justice and you desire mercy for all people. God of compassion, bring good news to the oppressed. Bind up the brokenhearted and comfort those who mourn. Lift up all who are hurting or in need. We remember especially those we name to you. Make your goodness and grace flow out to all. God of the powerful and of the helpless, make this congregation a place of healing and friendship. When our spirits are worn down, clothe us with strength. Empower us to welcome and comfort people in the name of Jesus. God of sinners and saints, in your merciful kindness, you have chosen to call imperfect and sinful people, and you have used them throughout the ages to testify to your love. Take away our weeping and at the last, return us to you in joy. Draw near to us, God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior fill you with love and the unexpected spirit guide you on your journey now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.